What are some of the items that we'll be looking at today? Um, you know, there's items all that span all of Michael's life and career. We have, you know, from fine and decorative art, outdoor statuary, cars, um, items from his career. I mean, we've got uh, very iconic pieces like his white glove that he wore in many stage performances of Billie Jean. We have his hat, um, many of his jackets that he wore in the Victory Tour, uh, many stage-worn uh, and video-worn clothing. So it, it's really... a, a a collection unlike anyone else. I mean, there's no other, we go into a lot of celebrities' homes and I have to say that there's no celebrity that's as eclectic and eccentric as Michael Jackson in their collecting. Items from the late Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch nearly made their way into private hands last April when they were earmarked for a special high-profile Beverly Hills auction. One of the biggest projects in our lifetime that we've ever uh, put together, it's uh, the collection of Michael Jackson. And last summer, uh, July of 2008, we were contacted by Michael Jackson and his manager to put together a world-class exhibition and auction of the items from Neverland. And uh, so it's been, you know, a long eight months in putting all this together, but uh, so we're finally here now uh, with the exhibition opening today and, you know, to the public, and then the auction takes place next week. So in a couple of weeks, all of this will be dispersed, gone, and uh, but not forgotten. That's exactly right. I mean, a lot of these items will find uh, uh, new homes and good homes, we hope. It's nice to be here in Beverly Hills. I was wondering, however, how far away Neverland is from here, uh, and you probably went back and forth in your pickup, right? Yeah, <laughs> well, Neverland, I went back quite a few times, me and about 30 men. Um, you know, we stayed up there, uh, you know, for the nights that we were, for, for about 90 days, uh, me and my staff, and it's about a three-hour drive, but uh, fortunately it's a scenic drive, but nonetheless, it's uh, it, it got kind of uh, monotonous going back and forth a lot. Uh, but, you know, we realized what we were actually doing was that we were closing down Neverland, which was a, a, a chapter in Michael's life so they can move on to the next chapter. Um, you know, looking back, I, I think we'll always see it as an exciting thing. Right now, it's just been a challenging project because uh, of the magnitude. I mean, it took, uh, like I said, 30 men, uh, 90 days, and 10 semi-trailers uh, for us to remove everything out of the property. With the catalogs printed and the auction set for April, Michael Jackson surprised everyone with an 11th hour plea to cancel it, retaining his possessions. Then two months later, the legendary pop star shocked the world with his untimely death. The auction that never was did make a brief appearance in Beverly Hills at the Robertson's May Building. The exhibit was open to the public for two weeks in a museum quality setting, and ironically, had it been displayed after the King of Pop's death, it would surely have sold out every single ticket. In addition to gold records and costumes, the display included unusual items from Jackson's collection like this life-size statue of Darth Vader made from Legos. Science fiction and fantasy figures dominated the room devoted to Jackson's arcade collection, which featured an assortment of life-sized superheroes like Superman and Spider-Man. This life-sized E.T. greeted many a visitor to Jackson's wondrous estate. Neverland's arcade room was a favorite stop for guests who played the latest pinball or video game as long as they pleased without having to put in a single quarter.
In one of the largest displays, Michael Jackson's furniture collection reflects both the unusual and the eclectic, as waxen figures inhabit various settings reflecting such styles as modern, early American, Egyptian, Roman, and Art Deco. And in perhaps the most poignant display, bronze figures of children inhabit an endless fantasy world, reflecting a childhood which forever eluded the 50-year-old pop star. We've done auctions for Barbara Streisand, Cher, and, um, and when we do projects like this, uh, we hire a design team out of New York, WRJ Design Associates. And what they do is, their job is to put everything together with the exhibition to make it uh, so it's tastefully done and it's more of a museum quality rather than just lining things up and putting tags on them. And we've really, we, what we've done is we've recreated many of the rooms in Neverland. So a lot of the items that you'll see, the different, uh, you know, the beds and the tables, they're with items as they were uh, in the house. There seems to be like uh, a part of his childhood in one section, uh, elegant uh, displayed items in another, um, his music uh, career in another, is from my observation. Yeah, we've kind of segregated the different parts of his life as it was at Neverland. I mean, you had the house and the guest houses where he had the furniture, you had some of these life size figures that he had around uh, the different rooms. Um, then he had a, a separate building that was an arcade room, and we've recreated that arcade room with all the games, the video games and pinball machines. And then he had a Disney collection, which many of the items, uh, the Disney Anna collection, were in the theater uh, and the main house uh, at Neverland. Um, then we also have, there was two train stations on the property, so we've recreated and put some of those items back, again back together so that, uh, you know, we, we wanted to give people and his fans as much sense of Neverland as they could have since, you know, very few people got to go up there. Uh, I was fortunate enough to go there uh, with our producer, and uh, I do remember the tr little train ride going up uh, into uh, Neverland, and uh, I remember the elephant and the sheep, and where are the animals? Do we know? They're not here. Yeah, well, we when we were uh, called in, they were just giving away the rest of the animals to various zoos and, and you know, finding good homes for them. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is that we were also responsible to remove all of the uh, uh you know, the Ferris wheel, the bumper cars, uh, the zipper. Um, we sold those privately uh, prior to bringing everything back here to Los Angeles to our warehouse. How does this uh, auction compare to others you've had? Well, every auction's different, but this uh, is no exception. This is quite a, a spectacular exhibition and auction. Um, I mean, we, we are honored to be, uh, you know, chosen as the auction house to put this together. But it's also, you know, somewhat of a curse because of the magnitude of it. Uh, and it just, you know, it's eaten up, you know, nine months of our lives uh, where we haven't been able to really focus on anything else. But, um, you know, I think in the end we're going to look back and be glad that we did it and had the association preserve the history of these items so that uh, people always know where they came from and, and where they've gone. And, you know, and that's what we do. We, we, we preserve the history of items, especially of a career like somebody like Michael Jackson. And there's two categories of collecting here. It's not only Michael Jackson, uh, the king of pop, but it's Neverland. I mean, Neverland will forever be part of pop culture history. And so we're preserving that. And I think, you know, he always wanted it to be a place that was magical and it helped people. And, you know, so I, I think he liked that idea. The pop star is gone, the legend lives on, as Michael Jackson's music and his message resonate in a world still reeling from his passing. <laughs>